One of these young ladies is a newspaper correspondent who just returned from covering President Eisenhower's trip to the Far East. What is your name, please? My name is Elaine Shepard. What is your name, please? My name is Elaine Shepard. What is your name, please? My name is Elaine Shepard. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Elaine Shepard and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Helene Curtis, makers of fine beauty products. Creators of Suave Hairdressing and Conditioner and America's number one hairspray, Helene Curtis Spraynet. Now, before I introduce our sensational panel, which to me they are anyway, I'd like to tell all of you that we are changing time next week. We'll be on the same night, but to tell the truth, we'll be coming to you starting with next week, the same night, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Next week, same night, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Now, let's meet our panel. First, Mr. Tom Poston. Tom, you're appearing in a play somewhere, aren't you? Yes, the male animal at, uh, at uh, Skowhegan, Maine, uh, for the rest of this week. And then we go to, uh, I'm projecting a little bit because the people up there don't have TV sets, and I'm hoping they can just hear me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then we go to Laconia, New Hampshire next Monday. Hope it's a big success, Tom. It is, thanks. Kitty Carlisle is next to Tom. <laughs> Kitty, uh, a hail hearty uh, God bless and a get well quick to your young son, who was operated on for an appendectomy, wasn't he, last night? 3.30 this morning. Wow, yeah, they took the old one out and put in a good one. That's going to happen to me. Next, Donna Michi. And finally, Miss Polly Bergen. Now, panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it to you. I, Elaine Shepard, am a correspondent for the North American Newspaper Alliance. I have accompanied President Eisenhower on his trips to the Middle East, South America, and most recently to the Pacific. I have traveled in the President's private plane, the Columbine, and I once spent several days on the aircraft carrier Essex with 3,000 men. During the past 12 months, I have had exclusive interviews with Castro, Cho Enlai of Red China, the President of Pakistan, and Prime Minister Nehru of India. Signed, Elaine Shepard. We begin tonight with three charming young ladies, each claiming to be Elaine Shepard, correspondent who traveled with the President of the United States. Let's start this questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, Bud. Uh, I'll start with number two, please. Miss Shepard, number two, could you tell me, is Jim Haggerty right or left-handed? He is left-handed. Uh, number three, could you tell me what President Eisenhower habitually wears on his head when he plays golf? A golfing cap. Uh, number, number one. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. <laughs> number one, Miss Shepard, number one, could you tell me how tall is Fidel Castro? He's very tall. He's well over six feet. Thank you. Number two, which Columbine is now in service as the president's plane? The Columbine number three. You, Kitty Carla. Uh, number three, what did the president wear? when he was having dinner in the Philippines with the president of the Philippines? The native shirt. Do you know the name of it? Tagalog, something like that. N uh, number one, what did, uh, what, was his son with him, Major Eisenhower? Yes. What did he wear? He wore a native shirt also. Number two, was Barbara Eisenhower with them? Yes, she was. What did she wear? She wore um, a regular American dress. She didn't wear a native costume? No. Uh, number three, what is the name of Nehru's sister who was represented uh, at the United Nations? I can't remember. Number one, do you remember? I don't. Number two, when President Eisenhower... Don Amici, please. Number, uh, 
three, uh, whose birthday was celebrated in Manila? Barbara Eisenhower. Uh, number, uh, number two, who is Joe Kingsbury Smith? He is the uh, United Press correspondent. Number one, would you agree with that? Um, yes. Number three, would you agree with that? I didn't, uh, would you repeat the name? Joe Kingsbury Smith. He's identified with Hearst in some manner. Uh, number, uh, number one, what is the make of the president's small plane? The, uh, what is the Columbine. Make of no, the make. Uh, the make is, it's a DC-7 or a, it's a four-engine plane. I don't know what the make is. Polly? Thank you, Biden. Uh, number three, do you know the name of, of the uh, pilot of the Columbine? Yes, Colonel William Draper. William Draper. Uh, number one, uh, what columns from New York City were also on the trip with President Eisenhower? Could you name a few? On the last tour? Yes, please. Uh, Bob Considine, Bill Henry, Ray Shearer. Uh, number two, uh, one gentleman who made the trip uh, with President Eisenhower, the, the last trip, is now doing a series of articles on Japan. Could you tell me who that is? Uh, Walter Winchell. Uh, well, that's all the time we have. It is time now to vote. So will you kindly, without consultation, do just that and mark your ballots, panel? As you do so, of course, you will be selecting number one, number two, or number three. May I remind you that the challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Everybody voted? Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three, Bud. Uh, I don't think Haggerty is left-handed. I was disappointed in the golfing cap uh, answer, <laughs> but I liked some of her other answers very much. Okay, Kitty, I which is your choice? I voted for number three. Well, I know that Colonel Draper is the captain of the Columbine because we've had him on this show. It's the captain's Columbine. The captain of the Columbine. Oh. <laughs> the captain's Columbine? Well, anyway, um, and number three, no, I, I, I was fooled. I thought that the Haggerty was left-handed. I thought they all gave marvelous answers, but I thought it was number three. Okay, Don, which one did you select? I voted for uh, number three also. She uh, seemed to know who Joe Kingsbury Smith, uh, she knew he was identified with Hearst, at least. And also she knew about Barbara Eisenhower's birthday being celebrated in Manila. And Polly, which one do you think is the real one? Well, I completely disqualified three and one. And, and then I completely disqualified two. <laughs> <laughs> so I was stuck with undisqualifying one of them, <laughs> and I settled for three. Oh, you did. I've got such numbers with crosses. I had three with a cross. That was not her, and oh, it was terrible. Okay, well, there we have it. Now, let's see. We have unanimous choice on number three, and we find out in our own particular moment of truth, which we have each week at this time, whether we're right, whether we're wrong as we discover which one of these three ladies is the correspondent who traveled with the president. The Willa Real, Elaine Shepard, please stand up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Elaine. Well, uh, number... One, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Bella Thornburg, and I write advertising copy for Castro. A convertible. Ah. Not <laughs> <laughs> it's a real sneaky pause you put in there, wasn't it? <laughs> Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Marie Hitt. I'm not doing anything just now because I'm being married in two weeks. <laughs> Uh, Marie, it would have been better for you being married in just two weeks if uh, there'd been more incorrect votes. There weren't, <laughs> but right. maybe wish you all the happiness in the world. Thank you. And also, of course, from Helene Curtis comes $150 for the three of you. We thank you very much for being with us. You'll find a gift package of Helene Curtis famous beauty products waiting for you, too. Good night, good luck, and God bless you. Happy marriage. Yeah. He is. <laughs> I 
I don't know if you all heard that. As one little parting shot, Elaine called out just as she left. She said, Jim Haggerty is left-handed. <laughs> I'd like to change my vote. <laughs> I don't think you'd really want to. Panel, may I present our next team of challengers? What is your name, please? My name is Captain Gordon Phelan. What is your name, please? My name is Captain Gordon Phelan. What is your name, please? My name is Captain Gordon Phelan. Follow along, please, panel, with this affidavit, if you will. I, Captain Gordon Phelan, am officer in charge of Texas Tower Number 4, which is part of the radar warning network protecting the northeastern coast of the United States. I was in the United States Navy for nine years. I found that I was not particularly fond of life at sea, so I transferred to the Air Force. I am now stationed on the tower which stands in the Atlantic Ocean, 73 miles off the New Jersey coast. <laughs> Signed, Captain Gordon Phelan, U.S. Air Force. Three stalwart gentlemen this time, panel, each one claiming to be Captain Gordon Phelan, stationed out at sea. Let's start this cross-examination with Polly Bergen. Polly, please. Thank you, bud. Um, and number one, is there any particular reason why the tower is called the Texas Tower? Except that they were designed after the tower is built in the Gulf and their gigantic size. Oh, I see. Number two, how were the towers put up in the Atlantic Ocean? They were uh, drawn out to sea by tugs and the prongs, three prongs, were drawn out like that. Mm -hmm. Then there was a caisson on the bottom. They filled that with water, tipped it up, sunk it down to the bedrock of the ocean. In other words, they're not dug in. They are just uh, almost... No, they're uh, on bedrock. They had to go through sludge I on see. the bottom of the ocean. Uh, number three, um, what, part, what, what was your, your particular job in the Navy? I was a pilot. Figures. Tom Poston, please. You were a pilot, number three? Yes. What does camber refer to in uh, aeronautical language? Camber? Camber. Never heard of it. Uh, tell me, number one, uh, uh, what is the land mass called on which uh, your tower is anchored? It's anchored on New York Shoals. Number two, do you know what Hampton Roads are? Yes, it's a, um, I'm not sure, uh, it's a uh, shoal, but I'm not sure where it's located. It's a, it's a navigational uh, mark. Kitty? Number one, what is the worst feature of your life on Texas Tower number four? The isolation. Number two, what is the worst fe feature? Well, I don't like the water. <laughs> <laughs> number three, is there anything to do with noise on the Texas Tower that bothers you? Uh, only the uh, foghorn that we have to put on when visibility goes down. Number three, is there a kind of loudspeaker that goes all the time? I mean, number one. Would you repeat that? Is please? there a loudspeaker that is heard all over the Texas Tower all the time? No, ma'am. Never? Never. Uh, number two, is it built of steel, the whole construction? Yes, ma'am. Number three, how long is your term of service? Don Amici. Uh, number one, what is a DE? The DE is a destroyer. What kind? A smaller destroyer. Uh, number uh, two, how many boilers are on a DE? Well, I'm sorry. How, how many boilers, boilers on a DE? I don't know. I'm a radar man. Uh, yeah, I'm an engineer, remember? <laughs> <laughs> number, uh, number three, what does the expression turn to mean? It means when you turn to the port. Turn to which way? Turn to the port. Uh, number one, when you enlist in the uh, uh, Air Force, how many years are you in for? I believe that depends on the type of enlistment you ask for. Number two, would you answer that mm -hmm. in the same way? I certainly would, yes. Num Ray, that's it. Time once again to mark your ballots, if you will, please, without consultation, and vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked. Okay, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I was, I was quite puzzled. Uh, I thought when I asked my own questions, I thought it was number one, which I have here. Number one I voted for. I'm not going to change that, friends. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, later on, number three gave some very nice answers. In fact, I thought they all were uh, 
wonderful liars. <laughs> Kitty, your choice. I voted for number one. I read that the worst feature on these Texas towers is the loudspeaker that goes all the time, and number one wouldn't tell me that. But number two didn't know about Hampton Roads, and that's something to do in the ocean that you ought to know about. And number three did give very good answers, but I thought it was number one. <laughs> Don, which one is your choice? I voted Don? for uh, number three. It's a pure guess on my part because I couldn't tell from the answers, but I, uh, one thing I can understand, if they didn't like the water, uh, uh, what what they leave the Navy for to go on this job? That doesn't <laughs> they didn't, make any sense didn't either. expect they'd wind up in this job, I'm <laughs> sure. And Polly, which one do you think is the real one this time? I voted for number one, uh, and I have no reason why, sir. What? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's the first that's time true. that's ever happened. You're not going to pin me down. <laughs> All right, there we have our votes once again. And we'll find out now whether we're doing well or not doing so well as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the real one who dislikes the sea and who is stationed out at sea. Will the real Captain Gordon Phelan please stand up? Well, I thank you, sir, and, uh, Paddle, you're doing well today. You really are. You're doing real well. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Yes, my name is Charles Schreiber. I'm a syndicated record critic with the New York Telegram and Sun. <laughs> and finally, number three, your real name and what you do, please, sir. My name is Daryl Lowell, and I'm a sales representative for United States Borax and Chemical Corporation. Thank you, sir. You did a little better than the first group, and there's one incorrect vote registered, which means $250 from Helene Curtis, and of course, a gift package of all of those fine Helene Curtis beauty products for your ladies. Thank you for being with us. Hope you had a nice visit. We enjoyed having you. Good night, and don't be seasick. <laughs> <laughs> now, panel, let's meet our third team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Shirley DeRoche. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Shirley DeRoche. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Shirley DeRoche. Again, panel, your attention on your copies of this affidavit. I, Dr. Shirley DeRoche, am a former dancing teacher. Although I am the mother of four children, I have a career of my own. I completed a four-year course in three years and am now a licensed chiropractor. Signed, Dr. Shirley DeRoche. <laughs> Again, three ladies panel, this time each of them claiming that they are Shirley DeRoche, Dr. Shirley DeRoche, chiropractor. And we'll start this round with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty, please. Thank you, bud. Uh, number one, how many bones in the feet? dear. <laughs> I can't remember. Number two, do you know how many bones in the feet? 24. 24? 24. Number three, what are hocks? Hocks are part of an animal's foot, I believe. Uh, number one, can you tell me when you uh, massage somebody down the back, is it better to do this kind of a motion or is it better to do that kind of a motion? I'm, <laughs> I'm interested personally. Oh my. Bud's making funny faces at me. <laughs> well, I don't... Uh... I think massage and chiropractic are quite the same, and I, I wouldn't even attempt an answer on that. Oh. Well, number two, when you crack the neck, is that part of chiropractic? No, it is not. You never crack anybody's neck? No. You never do, you know? No. Don? Number one, or number three, rather, what is a uh, ganglia? Uh, a ganglia is a nerve center where the ends of nerves come together. Number two, what causes muscle contraction? That's a spasm of the nerve. Spasm of what? Spasm of the nerve, whichever one. Number one, how are muscles fed? Well, they have a nerve supply. They also have a, a nutritive supply, much as, as the rest of the body. Thank you. Number uh, three, what's carried off uh, from the muscle by the bloodstream? Number three. I'm afraid I'll have to pass on that one. Uh, number, uh, number two, could you answer that question? Yes, what? I could. There is nothing. Nothing is carried off from no. it? 
Polly? Nothing is carried off from what? I didn't hear that. Well, from, from the muscle by, by the bloodstream. By the that bloodstream, what you said? Yes. The bloodstream the doesn't carry anything off? Nothing from the muscle. Oh, from the muscle. That was so the answer. Oh, <laughs> for Kitty and myself, number three, what exactly does a chiropractor do? A, a chiropractor attempts to adjust the segments of the spine so that they are in correct working order. They don't work anywhere else except on the spine, is that correct? Uh, in other words, number well, two, assuming, they don't as we all, mm -hmm. assuming as we all know that the spine, of course, has repercussions in all parts of the body, uh, but they work primarily on the spine. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, number one, there is another uh, form of work whereby they massage people and work on the, and all that sort of jazz. Do you know what that is? Uh, I, what, what is the title for I that? I think kind you're of referring to uh, osteopaths. Yes. Number two, what's the difference between an osteopath and a chiropractor? An osteopath works at the particular part of the body which is malfunctioning, an ankle or a hand or something like that. I see. Chiropractic works on the spinal column as a cause of... Oh, one more. Oh, it's very important. Tom, I'm sorry. Oh, you're right. What is that going on? Yes. Uh, Polly would like to know, <laughs> what is a uh, pectoral muscle number three, please? Pectoral muscles, I believe, are in the back. Thank you. Number two, maybe you can tell me, what is an aneurysm? An aneurysm has to do with a heart. This is not in the chiropractic field. Oh, it, it isn't in the chiropractic field. No. All right. Number two, what is deep heat? Can I you beg your pardon? Deep heat. Oh, a deep heat treatment. What is that? Well, this is a method used by some doctors, and uh, it's a question of relieving the nerve pressure by well, well, wait a minute. I I'd like to ask one extra question well, because well, Polly got We don't have time because I've got to work on my... Question. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to manipulate my microphone here and have you all manipulate your ballots, if you will, please, and mark them. As you do so, vote for number one, number two, or number three. All right, everyone voted? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number two. But, yeah. uh, what? well, <laughs> you know as well as I do that a pectoral muscle isn't in the back. That's right. That's right. Even though it so, was my question. Yes. I mean, you <laughs> asked her, but it was my question. It absolutely was. You asked it beautifully, though. But she also... <laughs> she Kitty, for whom did you vote? I can't even give my reason. <laughs> Polly. I voted for number one, and I tell you, it's always the same. When I say it's got to be number one, it never is. Number three says the pectoral muscles are in the back, and if they're in the back, I'm a monkey's uncle. <laughs> they're here. And number two says there are 24 bones in the foot, which I think there are many more than that. So it's got to be number one, and it never is. <laughs> okay. Don, your vote, please. Well, i got to be wrong. That's all I know, because <laughs> I don't know where the uh, pectoral muscle is, and, uh, but she's the only one. That, I mean, she knew where the ganglia was. I don't know. I don't know. As a matter of fact, I don't know very much number about Number three is your and Polly? I voted for number two, and Tom will give his reason why. No, he won't. Because no, I took up his won't. time. There isn't time. I didn't mean to take up because his time. Polly's no. nurse I'm told me I'm sorry, to. Tom. Well, I we finally mean. needed and manipulated our way into finding out from which all your one fans of these ladies yelling at me. the real lady chiropractor. So will the real Dr. Shirley DeRoche please stand up? Thank you very much, Dr. DeRoche. Congratulations, Kitty, you got all three, didn't you? For the you, first huh? time since the show's been on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Catherine Bangs, and I'm secretary at Time and Life. Thank you very much. <laughs> and number three, your real name and what you do, please? My name is Joan Haynes, and I'm with Abercrombie and Fitch. I sell for them. Well, we thank you very much and hope you enjoyed your visit to us. And also, we check up on our score and find there were one, two, three incorrect votes this time at $250 each for a grand total of $750 from Helene Curtis. You are the big winners tonight, by indirection, I should say. And on your way out, of course, the gift package of all of Helene Curtis' fine beauty products for each of you. Thank you so much. Good night and good luck to you.
Well, that's all the time we have for tonight, except to remind you all again that next week we come to you on To Tell the Truth, same night, but at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Good night, and God bless you. Good night. Good night, Good night, buddy. Bud Collier saying good night from Helene Curtis and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is the Mark Goodson and Bill Patton production in association with the CBS Television Network. This week's show has been brought to you by Helene Curtis. Makers of fine beauty products, creators of suave hairdressing and conditioner, and America's number one hairspray, Lean Curtis Spray Net. Now, this is Burn Bennett saying good night from To Tell the Truth.